And so today I'm gonna to explain the truth behind organic content marketing that could make or break your agency. So make sure you get a notepad and a pen and make sure you lock in, put your phone down. Um, this is the highest priority thing that you could do right now if you are struggling with the OnlyFans agency to generate traffic, right? Um, and so make sure you actually pay attention and listen to the things I'm gonna say, because I'm literally gonna be giving you everything that I've learned over the past three years of running a multiple seven figure OnlyFans agency. We touched just under $700,000 last month. Um, we've worked with hundreds of models. We are absolutely crush it in the space. So if you wanna learn from my mistakes and you wanna speed up time, then it's imperative that you actually pay attention to this video. This is not no bullshit. Oh, you just, you know, set up a website and a look. I'm not gonna teach you any of that bullshit that the other gurus teach you. I'm gonna to get to the real stuff that you actually need to learn in order to succeed. So I don't care if you make 100 grand a month, 500 grand a month, we work with agencies all over the, the, the mark from, you know, zero in our free school community all the way up to 300K a month in our partnership program. And so put your ego aside and just pay attention to what I'm gonna do because I'm telling you the people from zero to 300K a month, a lot of them are missing these fundamental things that I'm gonna talk about in today's video. So I don't care who you are and how good you think you are and how much money you're making, pay attention because this literally has the ability to make or break your agency, right? So I'm gonna dive into one of the most crucial aspects of actually running a successful OnlyFans management agency that is predictable and reliable. That's the key thing. You don't want an agency that's fucking volatile. One month you make 20K, then you're back at 5K, and then you're at 50K, and then you're back at 10K. You don't want that, right? You, to scale a business, you need predictability and you need reliability, right? And so like, I'm gonna teach you how you can create predictability and reliability through organic content in today's video, right? Because if you're in this position right now where you feel like, or you don't even feel like, you know that, okay, one model you bring on, she gets results, and the next model you can't get the same results, or all these different variables, or your models are lazy, or whatever the, the, the things are that's going wrong in your agency, if that's you, then this video is gonna solve those problems, right? So I just wanna preface by saying that, because organic content is by far the number one best way to make money in this industry, like by an absolute amount. We've tried everything, we've done everything over the past three years. We've got, I've probably got one of the biggest, if not the biggest networks in the space of other agencies. I've seen the inside of hundreds of successful agencies, what they're doing, how they're operating, and I can hands down say organic content is by far the most leveraged thing you can do. And if and everyone thinks it's this hard, slow thing, but in reality, they just have any systems around it, they don't know how to build an organic content machine and scale it effectively, right? And everyone, so, and because people don't know how to do that, they just look for these black app methods and these quick fixes and these one solutions, but that doesn't solve the root of the problem, right? So again, organic content is the best way to make money as an OnlyFans agency because it just compounds over time, right? When done right, it creates a it creates leverage that just goes exponential. And ignoring uh, organic content marketing means that you're gonna miss out on sustainable success because in today's digital age, as you already know, attention is the new oil. So if you look at a creator like Jelly Beans, for example, I think she's making around 2.8 million a month at the moment, which is 32 million a year, and she's only doing organic content, right? And that's extremely high profit margins because she scales simplicity. She doesn't necessarily yet have a massive chat in team. She has a no PPV page. And so she's just making 2.8 mil a month in reoccurring subscriptions, which is insane. And it's because simplicity scales. She's not overcomplicating it. She's not doing dating apps. She's not doing all these other things. And I'm not saying one traffic method is good or bad. They can all work and there's room to have them all. But if you like, if you haven't nailed a specific traffic strategy yet to generate predictable and reliable results, then just focus on one thing at a time first before you move into the other aspects, before you move into Reddit, before you try dating apps, and before you do all these other things. And again, I wouldn't recommend dating apps unless you're making a ton of money and you've got a ton of money to invest and connections and developers and all these other things. I just wouldn't recommend it. Um, and again, I'm not saying it does or doesn't work. It's just you don't need it to be able to make the money you want to make, right? It really depends on you and your goals as a business owner, but we're going to get into that, right? Um, so. Let me just like get into it, right? Now, when it comes to organic content, the speed at which you see results with organic content is gonna vary on a couple different things, right? It's gonna vary on the creator's experience and then your skill level, right? Um, and this all comes into the system that you build. But use the catch. 
delaying your learning and experimentation is going to be detrimental, right? So if you're putting off organic content because it's too hard and there's too many variables that go into it and you don't understand it and you never will and so you just want to find these easier methods because your models are lazy and they're not going to do content. So I'd rather go and figure out something else, right? If that's, if that's you, you're never going to succeed long term because fundamentally there, and this is going on a bit of a tangent, right? But fundamentally, if that's how you think, you're never actually going to be able to solve the core root of the problem because let's just say your excuse for not learning organic content is, oh, I, I, my models are just lazy and they won't do the work or they're not good at content or I don't understand content or whatever, right? Well, there's a couple of things we can unpack there. The, these are almost smoke screens, right? They're not actual real problems because what's the root of the problem there? It's not the fact that your models are lazy. It's not the fact that you don't know about content. It's none of that. The actual root of the problem there is client acquisition, right? And this video isn't about client acquisition, but I'm just explaining to you that. So if you think like that, well, the actual problem is client acquisition because if you could generate five to 10 appointments every single day with models, you probably wouldn't have the issue of lazy models because it's something that I don't face. It's something that doesn't impact me. I'm not saying I, I don't have lazy models. I never work with lazy models. Of course I do. Everyone does. But that doesn't affect my business because my business isn't built around lazy models, right? And so we have a specific system that allows us to horizontally scale and vertically scale, right? So like my end goal with my agency is to have a thousand creators making a thousand dollars a month on a 50-50. So we're making $500 a month on each creator. That's an example. Obviously it wouldn't be exactly those stats. So, you know, we're making 500 grand a month horizontally scaled, super efficient. And then maybe 50 creators vertically scaled in our different team, right? Because we have we have different teams at our agency for different creators, so we can vertically and horizontally scale. But again, I don't want to go on a tangent, but what I'm saying is if you're sat there thinking like, I don't need to learn organic content because my models are lazy and I don't understand it. Well, again, you're never going to succeed because again, the real problem there is not the fact that you don't want to learn organic content because it's hard work, not the fact that you don't want to learn out the thinking systems, not the fact that your models are lazy. The fact is you haven't actually solved client acquisition. So before you actually like figure out this stuff, you need to go and solve that problem of client acquisition. But again, that's a different conversation for a different day because again, like I said, if you could generate five, 10 appointments every single day with models, um, then you wouldn't have the issue with lazy models and you shouldn't build your business around lazy models, right? You shouldn't have that desperation mentality. If you've only got one model because it's really difficult for you to find models, then again, it's a client acquisition problem. You shouldn't go and find the dating app strategy because you've got this one model. Like that's when you shouldn't build your business around those types of creators, right? Not gonna be a good idea. So again, right? There's no magic bullet when it comes to content. You need to start now because the sooner you start, the better it's gonna be in the long term. And when you start now, you're going to be able to figure out what works and what doesn't, and you're going to be able to continuously improve, right? Um, and this is why you need an actual organic content system. If you don't know, understand systems thinking, I'm not going to go over it in this video. You can join my free school community. I've got nothing to sell you. I'm trying to sell you a course or a program. Um, literally, free school community, free course attached to it in the link below. And there's a module in there called systems thinking, and it's going to teach you how to think in systems, right? And so it, that's going to be a good start. So you can actually build a system so you can understand the inputs that go into the system. You can understand the process, the output, the feedback, and the metrics, and then what the environment the system's built in, right? So um, you need to build an organic content system because that's going to be crucial for long term success, right? Because if you don't know, why you do this thing or why this works or why this doesn't work and you've done track you've done any data it's going to be very difficult for you to ever get predictable and reliable reliable result and it's going to be very difficult for you to scale without a lot of risk right and so if you do not build a system you're not going to be able to replicate results for other clients so if you've got this one superstar client right now and your other clients you sign just they can't seem to hit that same sort of level of, of superstardom well you're in your head thinking it's probably all these different things that they're lazy and this and that, but it's probably not that. It's probably the fact that you have a system in place that can replicate those same results because you didn't track what worked for that client, so you can't replicate it, right? Um, and obviously, there's a lot of different things that go into that, but again, right? So, so a system is going to help you understand why certain strategies work and why others don't, and it's going to give you an actual replicatable framework for success, right? Now, before I get into the rest of the video, I want to talk about setting your particular business goals, right? Because everyone always comes to me and they always ask me like these specific questions of like, well, what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? So what does your system look like? Or what is that? None of that really matters because I'm in a different position to you, right? And so 
if you copy me, it's not necessarily going to work for you because it's, it's not binary, right? As soon as I learned, like, you know, the world's not black and white and everything exists on a spectrum, really started to change the way I think because I, I would go to mentors and I'd be like, but how do I do this? What are you doing? And, and I, then when I would try and copy them, it wouldn't work for me. And I'd wonder why. And I'm like, it's because I'm in a different position. So if you have a small agency right now, a couple of clients, maybe you're making 10 grand, 20 grand, 30 grand, 50 grand a month, like you have a small agency, um, then you have advantages that I don't have, right? My agency has to be super standardized because it's at massive scale, right? And so like you will have advantages of personalization and other things that I can't do because it would just increase my operational drag and fuck everything up, right? And so when I say stuff, it's not just like you have to do this. You have to think, how could I take what Dylan said, but iterate on it and make it my own and make it better, right? And also you need to base it on your goals. You might not want a super fucking like seven division corporate structured agency. You might just want to make 10 grand a month. And so if that's all you want to do, then again, not everything I talk about is going to apply to you, right? You need to think about if I just want to make, if you just want to make 10 grand a month, well, what does that look like? And what's the most effective way you can do that for the highest profit, right? Um, and so you need to think about what your specific goals is. And so it's like, right, do you want to make 10K per month with just one creator? Because again, it's risky, but it's going to be higher margins, right? Or would you prefer managing 10 creators that will make 2K a month each? You take 50%, which is technically lower risk, but that's going to require a bit more operational effort, right? Um, and maybe you want to scale both vertically and horizontally like myself, which is the least risky and the highest revenue, but it's going to have the biggest operational drag. Um, and so you need to just figure out like, right, what are the financial goals? Where do you want to take your agency? And then what's going to be the best strategy that applies to how you want to scale, right? Because your goals early on is going to dictate how you actually shape your strategy for your agency, which is really important. And so this is why like a lot of people like on YouTube, they get all this bad advice and there's all these so many bad preconceived notions in this space from all these fucking fake gurus. It's like, they, they say it's like, it's, they act like it's a binary, like you have to do this, you have to do this, but it's not, right? Because nothing is. So many people fall into this trap. What that does is, is they fall into this trap of shiny, shiny object syndrome, right? Which is just chasing those quick fixes instead of focusing on the core business fundamentals. They don't think about first principles. They don't think about stuff on a first principles level, right? They don't understand the core business disciplines and the things that underpin it, right? Which is key. No one wants to learn that shit because it's boring. And so patience when building an agency is going to be key because desperation and agency often lead to failure. And so you need to concentrate on the root causes of the problems and address them with a steady focused approach, right? So a lot of people will have shiny object syndrome, right? And so how this works, I want to break this down for you. It's going to be a long video. Just stick with me. I promise it'll make sense at the end, right? Shiny object syndrome works like this, right? You know what you need to do, but you don't want to do it. So Instead, you turn to doing something else. So I'll give you an example, right? You know you you know client acquisition is the problem, or you know traffic is the problem because all these models you're saying are not getting results. But instead, you decide oh, it's too difficult to fix. I don't want to build a system around. I don't know how to build a system. So instead of looking for the insight, instead of you know uh, looking for help, instead of putting your ego aside and really doing the boring shit that's going to matter, you're like, oh, I mean, let's just fix the website. Let's just create a new logo. Let's just fuck around with the client acquisition, even though that's working perfect and the client acquisition systems within KPI, right? That's what a lot of people do. And so everyone experiences shiny object syndrome to some extent, but it's crucial that you actually learn how to manage it. And so there's a couple of ways that you can learn to manage it. The first way is to invert your philosophy around it, right? So most people believe that new is good and old is bad, that popular is good and unpopular is bad. Um, but to overcome shiny object syndrome, you actually need to flip that thinking. So you need to consider that new might be bad and all might be good and that popular might be dangerous and probably wrong and unpopular might be valuable, right? And so that's really important to understand because if you invert your philosophy, you focus on timeless principles and resist the urge to chase every new trend, which can be more effective in the long run, right? I promise you that, right? So um, that's the first step is inverting your philosophy. To solve shiny object syndrome next, take your finger off the trigger, right? Because most people, act super impulsively, right? They got their finger on the trigger and they're ready to act on a new idea that excites them. They do this OFM guru on YouTube, tell them about this new thing or they're in a group and they use someone doing this insane thing with dating apps or they look to uh, Instagram and they see this guy that's got 500 models and they like spread all over the place. They don't know what's the truth. They don't know what's wrong. It's because 
they don't know how to fundamentally think. And that's the biggest thing I do on, you know, on a lot of my, um, a lot of the people I work with is it's mainly just teach them how to think because a lot of people don't actually know how to think, right? So rather than giving them the shiny objects, I teach people how to think. I do give them the shiny objects as well, but I teach them how to think. How does the shiny object work? How I came to that conclusion? What was the hypothesis? How did we build the system? What's the, like all these different things, right? What's the scientific method we use? How can you apply that to your own set? How can you iterate on our shiny objects and make them better, right? I teach people how to fundamentally think because that's where everyone's missing because they've just been plagued with all this random information and they're just constantly seeking and looking for the new strategies, right? And so most people act, act impulsively, which keeps them stuck. And so to combat that, you need to develop the ability to detach from your thoughts and emotions and move yourself from a third person perspective. This practice allows you to objectively assess whether a new idea actually aligns with your long-term goals right? When you feel the urge to act on a new idea, pause and don't act immediately. Reflect on whether the decision is the right one for your long-term goals. By taking your finger off the trigger, you can avoid impulsive decisions that derail your progress. I was listening to a podcast the other day um, on, um, I forgot what podcast it was, like business breakdowns or something. And um, there was a guy on there and he was talking about the biggest success that he's seen. He's a billionaire and he was talking about the biggest success he's seen with all his billionaire friends is is um, the ability to not have FOMO. And that is what shiny object syndrome is, right? It's the fear of missing out on this new thing, this new strategy. He said, you just need you just need to have the fundamentals. You just need a strategy and you just need to follow that and stick to it, not worry about what anyone else is doing. And in the long run, you'll out-compete everyone else, right? And it's why we've done so well is because we've been really good. The amount of times that you can imagine, the amount of people that come to me with all these opportunities, right? Of, oh, you should try this dating app, so look, try this service, or try this, and we're just like, no, nope, we know what's working, we know where the future is, we've got our vision lined out, we know where we're going, we know where our long-term goals is, we're just going to stick to what we're doing, that's worked for us so well, but it's really fucking hard to do, and I made the mistake as well, I'm not perfect, right, I've spent hundreds of thousands uh, on dating apps and all these other things, and, and, and made big issues, and whenever we've derailed from our main goal and vision, it's always, it's always hurt us, right, and so it's really key. And then the next thing to curb that shiny object syndrome is just to slow down, right? This is something that people really don't understand and it's taken me years to understand this, but in business, speed isn't always an advantage. Everyone's always like, money loves speed, blah, 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 blah. But that actually puts people in a very dangerous mindset because speed isn't always an advantage in business because rapid impulsive decisions often lead to mistakes and long-term consequences. And I learned this from a mentor of mine, Sam Evans. I met him in Vegas recently and we was talking about this and it's just a really big thing, right? Because speed is good, but it, it, people look at it in the wrong way. And so just slow down and limit the number of decisions you make, right? Simplify your life on fewer tasks, but think through them carefully. Before making significant decisions, give yourself 24, 48 hours to reflect, right? Write down your arguments for and against the decision and revisit them after some time because that practice actually helps you ensure you make well-considered choices rather than impulsive ones driven by emotion. So a lot of the reason people don't succeed is because they live in death by a thousand cuts. There's all these little micro decisions that you make in a day because they're like speed, 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 but it actually just halts them, right? Um, and so again, going back to that FOMO example, it's like distancing yourself from hype. This is something, again, I learned from Sam Evans and it was so key for me is hype can be so dangerous and misleading and it's often driven by groupthink and can lead to bubbles like the Bitcoin craze, for example, right? And so to maintain clear judgment, distance yourself from hype, physically and mentally separate yourself from environments that breed hype, right? Warren Buffett, for example, has his office in Omaha, away from the financial hubs of New York and Silicon Valley to avoid the noise and hype. And Peter Thiel moved to LA for similar reasons. So choosing location or the places you hang out online or the groups you hang out in in OFM, that allows you to focus without constant distractions and that's going to significantly improve your decision making, right? Um, and so that's just a couple of things you can do. There's a lot more things you can do to curb shiny object syndrome. Again, I've got an entire video in my school community and, and course explaining even more in depth um, about shiny object syndrome. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that today, just because this video would be like two hours long, right? And so I just wanted to I just wanted to cover that because it's really fundamental to understand that before we get into the traffic side of things and how this works, right? Um, so. The next thing I actually uh, want to go over is your efforts, right? So if you look at this, right, I've got this energy diagram, right? As you can see, this diagram right here, right? So what that is, what this diagram is, let me just make sure you guys can actually see this, right? What this diagram is, is um, 
this shows progress that people make, right? And so most people operate this way. This is mirror, so it's really weird. <laughs> most people operate this way, where this is their energy, and they spread themselves super thinly by doing, they make one inch of progress in each thing, right? But someone that understands how to actually be productive and how to actually make results and create leverage, they do this. They make 10 inches of progress focusing on one thing, right? So it's really key you understand that because if you think of your efforts like that energy diagram, if you focus on one thing deeply, you'll make significant process progress. But if you spread your efforts thin across multiple areas, you only make minimal progress in each. And so it's about making 10 inches of progress in one area rather than making one inch of progress in 10 different areas, right? And that's really important to understand. So I just wanna give you now the fundamentals of how you can apply this, right? And again, you don't have to take this word for word. This is not, you don't have to add, like do exactly what I say. You wanna develop it in your own way and iterate on it, right? Um, and so like, I, you know, there's a, there's a lot more depth that was that, that can go into this, but I want to give you the overview so you know how to think about it, right? Like there's a lot more depth that goes into this, like the way we have to standardize is, is very, very advanced. Um, but again, it would take me, you know, 10 hours to explain and show you in a YouTube video. So I just want to give you guys like the actual game so you can go away and be like, right, okay, now I understand what I need to do, right? Um, so the first thing you want to do is you want to, you want to like when you sign a model, right? Let's just say you're a small agency. Let's just take it as an example, right? You're making 50 grand a month. Maybe you're making it with one creator or a couple of creators. You want to develop their five content verticals or their five content topics or pillars, whatever you want to call it, right? They all mean the same thing. And you want to come up with those those five topics of content. So, you know, maybe one of the, the topics of verticals is public interviews, for example, right? You want to come up with five of those ones and you want to then test them over a six week period. And ideally you want to be posting at least a minimum of three times a day at the absolute minimum, right? And you want to test over a six week period. And the reason you want to do that is that's going to be part of your system and you want to do it, you need a big enough sample size so you can actually track the data to see how you can improve the system and how you can make stuff work and see what doesn't work and see what didn't work, right? And so the issue is, people will listen to me, they'll listen to my organic content masterclass I did in another YouTube video and they'll be like, right, I've come up with my five verticals for my creator and then they test them for a week or two weeks, right? And then all of a sudden, they're like, I'm not getting any results, I'm not driving any traffic. And firstly, they're inconsistent with their posting or let's just say they even are consistent with their posting. They get emotional after two weeks and this is so fucking important. The amount of people that make decisions in their business based on their emotion is unbelievable and I used to be a victim to this myself but it's the worst thing you can do right you do not want to be irrational and make decisions based on emotion right I see it with every aspect of the business which is why I teach people how to think in my programs it's like right you're not seeing results for two weeks they come to me and they're like oh, I've been doing this for two weeks it's not working I'm like right okay cool like I've been posting three times a day yeah have you developed five content verticals yeah okay cool you just haven't given there enough time I said this is a six-week process and they're like yeah but it's not working I'm like Bro, you need the data, you need a big enough sample size like to figure out how you can iterate and improve in the system. And they don't understand like regression to the mean and they don't understand how to think at a first principles level. They don't understand that, okay, they, it, it's gonna take, you, it could take four weeks for them to see any results and then they give up in two weeks because they're emotional and they didn't see any results after two weeks because they are about shiny object syndrome. They need instant results, right? And that's not how it works. And again, that, that's also going to depend on your skills when it comes to content and your model skills. There's so many variables that go into it, right? And so I'm like, you need to test for over six weeks. And after six weeks, you want to track, you, you want to be tracking everything throughout that six weeks. So you need the feedback, right? And so let's just look at it from a systems perspective, right? Your input is going to be the content verticals you give to your creators. The process is going to be here actually filming and recording those, those uh, verticals. The output is going to be the actual post, the content you get, right? And then the feedback is going to be your system for tracking the data, right? And then that's going to be in the environment of wherever your support system is, whether you speak to your clients on WhatsApp or wherever, right? And so after six weeks, you're going to have a bunch of data. You're going to have a big enough sample size to analyze what worked and what didn't, and then you can refine your approach. And so it's the tortoise and the hay thing. Like uh, I'll, give you a, I'll give you an example of, of two students of mine, right? One spent three months learning the fundamentals and using the scientific method to test his content creation hypothesis. And he built an actual working system and scale from 10K a month to 100K per month in just five months, right? Whereas the other student 
Uh, he was operating out of desperation and fear, and he ignored my advice. He didn't listen to any of the fundamental stuff. He didn't learn how to think. He didn't learn any of the boring shit that no one wants to learn. And he just constantly chased quick fixes, right? And he saw massive inconsistent results. And the thing you need to realize is both these guys came to me at the same time. They were both making 10 grand a month. They started at the same level, skill level, everything. They were, they were It was pretty much like two identical human beings in the exact same situation, right? And one of them got results and the other one didn't, even though they were exposed to the same information and the same uh, advice, right? And it was because the, the one was just chasing those quick fixes and didn't listen and couldn't get out of his own head and couldn't put his ego aside. And he saw inconsistent results and eventually dropped to like back to where he was. And so like one month, you would find this new shiny object, for example, like flash trends. He would go and do it and apply it and his model would jump to 30 grand a month and he'd be like, yes, I'm making 30K a month. And then flash trends would uh, would go would get fucked and he couldn't do them effectively anymore and his models would get banned. And then all of a sudden he's back to 10 grand a month and he's like, what the fuck? Whereas this other guy is making 10 grand a month during the same time as him, he's like seeing little progress here and there. Like he's steadily climbing, steadily climbing because he's trying to figure out a system that works. And then all of a sudden when he finds a system that works, I'm like, right, cool, you've got a system, you've got the data, this works. Now we just need to put more volume through the system. He did that and instantly boom, 100 grand a month in five months, right? Just expert, you get that exponential growth curve. There was this latency, this lag time, and then boom, exponential growth, right? And that's what happened. So when you see two people, and or if you're comparing yourself to someone and you wonder why you've been in the space longer and they just absolutely just gone parabolic in two, three months, it's probably because they understand this fundamental principle, right? And so it's really important that you get this into your head. I'm not just saying this to say this. This is a real fucking example. And I see it happen time and time again, but people just don't want to admit it because it's hard work to learn the fundamentals, right? And so you need to figure out that, right? You need to, you, you the difference between these two people is they both have the same skills, same knowledge, but their approaches is what made all the difference, right? And so like, if it takes you, four months to prove a process and build a system around organic content. So be it. If you don't get the results you want for those four months or those six months, however long it takes, it doesn't matter because once you find something that works, you just put so much volume through it that you, you just go exponential. You go from 10 grand a month to 100 grand a month in 30 days, right? That's what's possible when you build a predictable and reliable system, but you're never gonna build a predictable and reliable traffic system, organic content system, if you don't test your hypothesis, if you don't use scientific method, and if you don't actually go through the iterations and make the improvements based on the sample size of data you get back, right? Which is really, really, really important that you understand this. Um, and just to touch on that, right? The, the, the big issue that I see people face as well, other than shiny object syndrome, is they stimulus hunters, right? And you don't want to be a stimulus hunter, right? The biggest mistake people make when it comes to learning uh, organic content is they look in for stimuli instead of looking for the fundamentals, right? People that want, that want stimuli are stimulus hunters. People that want fundamentals to build their own stimuli and systems are fundamental seekers, right? And so stimulus hunters are people that want the newest organic traffic method or the newest traffic method in general or the newest dating app strategy or the newest organic content strategy or the newest meme page marketing strategy. They always just want the easy copy and pasteable shiny stimuli, shiny objects, right? That will just immediately fix their business. And again, they may find the short-term success in their new shiny stimuli, but in the long term, they suffer immeasurably in their business as they just stimulus hop. They go from flash trends to do dating apps to Reddit to this, to this, to this, right? And they never have predictable success and they never, they just they just live in the same six months over and over again, right? Whereas fundamental seekers, they, it's a slower, it's the tortoise and the hay. Fundamental seekers seek to find the fundamentals that the new and hot stimuli are built on top of. So they, they want to go a layer deeper. They want to think of first principles. They want to go a layer deeper and find out why why is this shiny stimuli working? Why is this flash trend method working? Why is this working, right? And they also actively look for fundamentals from other disciplines, from other business. If you don't know what business disciplines are, you need to go and study it, right? It's super important. And you don't need to know all of them. You just need to know a fundamental level, right? Um, and so like, and what I mean by that, just on a tangent, is like people say, yeah, yeah, I'm in business. And they don't even know the fundamentals that underpin business. It's like, well, what is business? I ask people and they're like, well, you just make money online or wherever. And I'm like, yeah, but you do know there's stuff that underpin the, the the discipline, right? Like marketing, sales, 
economics, accounting, fi- like finance, like this, this is these things you need to know to know business, right? And most people don't, and they have a business and they're an entrepreneur, more like a entrepreneur, they don't actually have a business, right? And so going back to the fundamental seekers, fundamental seekers seek to find the fundamentals that the new and hot shiny objects, the new and hot stimuli are built on. They want to go lay it deeper and find out why the shiny stimuli are working. They also actively look for fundamentals from other disciplines so they can apply these to their organic systems, right? And so in the short term, fundamental seekers find slow, find this slow and painful, but in the long term, they find joy in creating their own winning stimuli, which is why they're able to just smash past everyone else, right? And it's why like we see so much results is because we do stuff that other people don't because other people don't know how to do it, right? And I can't teach other people how to do it in, in a way where it's like a shiny object because they need to go through this process of becoming a fundamental seeker. Once they know that, then I can give them our shiny object and then they can iterate on our shiny object. So they don't just monkey see, monkey do. They don't just copy them. They can iterate on it and make their own version and craft their own winning stimuli. Because if they copy us, then this is not going to be as effective, right? So if they can make their own version, then they're going to go and succeed even better. And that's what we teach people to do, right? I don't want, yeah, we give them the shiny objects, but we tell them, look, don't copy and paste it. This is how you make your own iteration. But before we give them the shiny objects, we teach them how to think first, right? And we teach them to be fundamental seekers so they can actually create their own business, make their own money and become their own money breaker. So to win in business, you must become a fundamental seeker, right? And so why do stimulus uh, hunters fail and fundamental seekers win? It's because of something called stimuli entropy. Entropy states that all systems die. So what works now doesn't work all the time and forever. And if you understand that you're a stimulus hunter or a strategy hunter, then you're being an idiot because you need to recognize that the most effective way to build organic content systems and the best way to make organic content truly easy is to do your own thing, right? That's it. Now, I'm not saying you have to design it all from scratch yourself. You can take inspiration like I've talked about, but you cannot afford to copy and paste. Copy and paste a monkey see, monkey do. You can't you can't do that to 100 grand a month, right? And if you do, you're not gonna be there forever and you might think you're gonna be there forever, but you're gonna drop, you're gonna hit pain, you, you're gonna go, it's gonna be volatile, right? Your model's gonna leave, shit's gonna go tits up. I see it happen time and time again. People get to 100 grand a month because this business model's so easy and they think that that's just gonna be it forever, but they fail to learn this up and all of a sudden they fucking bankrupt again, working in a job, right? I think it doesn't have to be that extreme, but that's just how it is. If you want to scale predictably and sustainably, you need to understand this. And no one else is going to teach you this shit because it's boring. And most people have probably clicked off right now because you can't be asked to listen to the stuff I'm saying, but yet you need to know it if you want to succeed, right? Because this is the secret for me, right? This is the stuff that none of the other gurus tell you because they don't want you to win or they don't understand it themselves because they fake gurus, right? (laughs) Simple as that. And so... Yeah, like I said, you could potentially win short term by being a stimulus hunter and you know, just implementing all the new shiny objects, right? Maybe you'll add an extra couple grand a month, eight grand a month, ten grand a month, wherever, right? Um, but by doing this, your business is built to fail. This is built to fail, right? Because now your entire business relies on a single strategy that will likely be exhausted in a few months. So you need to be able to do it yourself and you need to be able to strategize and build things in accordance with reality, right? And it's super important you understand that, right? So remember, organic content is the highest leverage activity you can engage in because it builds such a strong foundation for your business and creates lasting value. And so be a fundamental seeker, not a strategy hunter, right? Now, let's address some sort of common questions. How do you get traffic to your models pages, right? Now, the fastest way, again, is through consistent, high quality organic content. But what if my model's lazy? Well, you know, you can motivate them through incentives and gamifying and having incentive structures or solve client acquisition and find more dedicated models, right? Because it's all about maintaining high standards and a strong work ethic. And so you need to figure out and build a process, right? So, like I said, if you want to like learn more about organic content, then you can go and watch my organic content masterclass and you can build your own strategy from what we talk about. Or you can join my free school community um, and message me on my free school community. Um, sometimes every now and again, I'll do like a call. Like recently, I just did a free call for everyone in there about personal branding. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just trying to provide as much value as people, right? And so all you need to do when you're building an organic content system is come up with those five vehicles, test them over six weeks and see what works. And once you find stuff that works, once you've proven a process with one model and you've got it working, you've got the data back, you can just keep applying this process to all the other models 
that you work with, right? Um, and so yeah, if this uh, if this makes sense, if this video has like helped you, I, I like I said, I'm, I'm not gonna go. I just want to explain the fundamentals of like how to think about this stuff, rather than saying like you want to be doing this and this and this and all these things, and you need to create this type of content. These are the hooks you need to make, right? Again. None of that shit really matters. I just want to teach you guys how to think. So if you found this video valuable, um, and if you want to help me create even more value for you guys, just comment below like what else you want me to see. Do you want me to dive deeper on the specifics of traffic? Like, do you want me to go? Do you want me to talk more about this fundamental stuff? Like, what is it you guys want so I can best serve you and help you? Just let me know in the comments down below. Um, I hope this video was helpful. And um, yeah, other than that, I'll see you at the top. Peace.